Hey, how y'all doing? This is Craig here again. Today is December the 21st. Uh, it's roughly about noon, probably about 37 degrees, 38 degrees outside. Uh, typically don't come down to the barn and work when it's this cold, but uh, Christmas come a little early today. So I thought I'd show you what I bought myself for Christmas. Neat little tool, uh, especially when it comes to looking inside something that you may have to tear apart. So here it is. Get my eyes on here so that I can see. This is a bore scope, uh, endoscope, whatever you want to call it. It's a mini one. It's made to uh, hook up to mini USB. It can be used on your telephone, on your pad. Uh, this one's actually made for Android. Uh, that's what I run, personal preference. Um, but anyway, bought this off of Amazon. It's a Type C high definition mini endoscope. Comes with a couple different adapters. You can also use it on a Windows based computer, on your tablet. Uh, this one also says it's made for Mac and Type-C Android. Uh, you do have to download a program from the Play Store, which I've done. Uh, actually works really good. Uh, like I said, it does come with an adapter to hook up to mini USB. This particular model has the 8 millimeter head, 3 megapixel camera, and it's got 8 little LEDs around the camera on the end of the scope. Uh, actually lights stuff up really good. So we'll switch it over here. What I'm going to do, sorry about the shakiness there. Here's that 440, that MS440 Hetzel saw. Uh, actually, kind of at a standstill. I put the cylinder on it uh, with the metal shim gasket and had about 72 thousandths of an inch squish. Uh, took the gasket out, wound up with about 51 thousandths, excuse me, about 62 thousandths squish. So that cylinder is going to have to be um, decked roughly about 25 thousandths, 27 thousandths, somewhere in that range to get it down to what, what I think would be an acceptable squish area. That would give me roughly 23 to 25 thousandths. But, um, Here's what comes in the box. This is the scope itself. It's a rigid, a rigid cable. So wherever you put it at, it's going to stay. Um, that head's probably a little on the large side for saws, but it'll work. Um, have not tested it yet, but we're going to find out together what it's like. I did play with it in the house just a little bit. Um, that's the type C connector. And there is a adapter in the box here for the mini USB. It's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> just plug it in. Also in the box is a magnet. And a couple little pieces here. I really haven't read too much what's going on with it. I just did kind of glance at it. And also you have your adapter here for your USB port for your um, either your computer or your tablet or whatever would have just standard USB. This is a Dial view, I believe, is how that's pronounced. USB Type C inspection camera um, has an email address. If you have some issues with it, uh, the reviews that I read, uh, this particular company is actually really good about emailing you back and helping you through your issues. That was one of the reasons that I actually decided to purchase this particular one. Uh, like I said, I did buy it off of Amazon, and it was a cost of $15.99. And here in Ohio, we got to add a little bit of tax, so 
a little less than $17 shipped to the door. Um, resolution on the phone is 640 by 480. If you're using a PC, it's it's true high definition. It's 1280, 720. 66 degree angle um, view. Uh, the optimal focal distance is two to four inches. Um, I actually was using this in the house playing with it and I had some um, distances, you know, several inches and it was still giving me some really good pictures. Um, eight adjustable LED lights. Uh, I have not a, figured out how to do that, but one of the reviews I said there's a little dial on the end of the camera head that you use to adjust it with. It is actually waterproof to IP67. I have no idea what that means. And it supports Android 4.4 and above, Windows, Mac, um, book operating systems. And as you can see, it has a working temperature of minus 20 to 86 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So that's quite a little rugged camera there. It'll, it'll withstand quite a bit. Um, there is the, there is the um, program that I downloaded off of um, Play Store, that CameraFi. Uh, you just go in and type CameraFi in the search, and the very first one that comes up, uh, it actually has ads on it. So I, I may upgrade. If I like this program, I may pay an upgrade to get rid of the ads. Uh, and that's also the program that they suggested. And once I download that program, opened that program, and hooked it up, uh, she was right up and running. Had no issues with it. So we're going to do a little... A little test here uh, what I've got this is my phone it's a Samsung I'll take the case off it's a Mega Galaxy 2 it's close to a six inch screen I believe it's like a five seven it's it's a pretty good I love this phone too bad they quit making them I don't know what I'm gonna do when this one goes bad but I love this little phone. Uh, most of the videos that I shoot is done with this camera right here on this phone or with my LG 7-inch pad. I really do not have a true video camera. So every, every video that you've watched that I've done has been shot either using the LG pad or this Samsung phone. So it's straightforward, just plug it in. As soon as you plug it in, before you even open it up, the lights come on. And the program also has a function where you can have, as soon as you plug this camera in, it'll actually open the, the program up for you. So you do not have to um, go in and search for it and open up. But what you're seeing right now, this is the back of the LG pad that I'm using to, to shoot this video. Here's the front of it. As you can see in there, there's me turning the camera, my phone actually, and that's what you're seeing, the front of my pad. So we're going to do a little inspection. It definitely will fit through it definitely will fit through the spark plug hole. And as you can see there, there's the inside of the cylinder. Try to get this. I hope that shows up really good on the camera. Because that's really, that's an awesome picture. This, this has got great quality to it. Um, you can see the cross hatching. You can actually see where I've done some port work. That would be on the exhaust side there. Um, still got to get in there and do a little bit more. There's one of the transfers in the top uh, right hand corner there. There was actually some burrs in there that I went in and cleaned up with my um, bit. We'll go through the, this will actually go through the decomp valve, where the decomp valve will be. It's got limited movement, but there's the top of the piston you're looking at right there. I'm sorry about that. So 
So this would allow you to look at the, that's looking at the intake side of the cylinder and the top of the piston. And then you can come through the exhaust port. This is coming into the exhaust port. You can see some of the work that I've done there. Now there again, you're looking at the, oops, sorry about that, get that level. You're looking at the intake side of the cylinder. Looking at the top of the piston. Looking up at the combustion chamber. I think, I think I'm going to pay to get rid of these ads because sometimes they come in right where you need to see. But if you needed to see the intake side of the cylinder up there, I'm leaning again. Sorry about that. That's one of the transfer. There's one of the transfers right there. So if you wanted to look at the transfer ports, there's another transfer port right there just a neat little camera like I said it's it's sorry about that hit it with my foot neat little camera um, kind of shine it back here get the orientation right there I am behind the camera so you're actually watching me as I'm videotaping, video recording this and recording myself as I'm recording it. Um, pretty neat little camera. Uh, somebody's calling me, so I'm going to stop this. Hope you all enjoyed. Take care. See you in the next video. Have a great holiday.